You join me at a potentially rather exciting moment, for I have just received this! It's a big box! And more than that, although granted we all love big boxes, now inside I have reason to believe are my sabatons and helmet, which should get close to completing my 15th, uh, 15th century, that's 1450, set of gothic field plate. My suit of armour, or harness, as I'm supposed to say, uh, if people are meant to take me seriously. Although, why take me seriously? I mean, have you seen me? Anyway, some people, uh, in fact lots of people have been asking me, so what sort of helmet are you going for then? Uh, they've been emailing me this for quite some time, uh, because they can remember that I once said, I'm going to have a very difficult time picking a helmet, because I don't like salads, and I don't like barbutes, I'm not a tremendous fan of armets, what am I going to wear? Yeah, I did say that. Um, but then I had this conversation at the White Rose Armoury. I quite like being able to do things like see and hear, and move my head. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I know it wasn't really the fashion. We can so, make an armet. Yeah, so I was thinking probably an armet. Um, Although they're really Italian. But I've I'm, never seen an armet with a German artist before, so this will be a groundbreaking thing. Yeah, but I'm 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 British. Damn it! Absolutely, uh, that's, that's it. Then we'll make an armet. And <laughs> the, the ability to see down is utterly vital in a fight. Mm. Uh, he only has to just do a low blow and it oh, just disappears out of your vision. Agree more. Um, but if I put this down... There are loads of opportunities for breaths and holes and, and so forth to give me some downward vision. Mm. Mm. Do but they didn't either? do it. There's the close helm. More or less an arm at. Very the, recent. The, cl right? the close helm's later than the, the armour that you're wearing though. Put your three flutes in. I was going to say, we've got to match it to the armour, yeah. so we, we need to... Um, I'll put them three flutes in the um, brow reinforce. Well, is there any salad that doesn't make you look like a World War II bunker or no. a Cylon? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, seen other, yeah, I've seen other shapes on the, on the, the, on the front where, where you can... It, it does... Um, I think there's, I there's an armet visor one like mm. that. Yeah, and I think that I think Lloyd really likes that. And we're we're tying yeah. this in with the armour. Absolutely, it's got to match the armour, and it's mm. got to have some twiddle on it. That looks really good. I think that's uh, okay. That, you've just what? designed your helmet, mate. So I've just we... had one more idea. No. Oh. No more. Okay. My head's boiling. Do we have a helmet? Hey. I, it, well, we have I think we're pretty close. Yeah, because it's got the visor, it's got the fluting. Um, it okay, does go with the armour, it's got a visor that goes up and down, it's got breath so I can see. Um, I, it just occurred to me to maybe add, just, I mean, this is just an idea. I mean, maybe it could go, for instance, I don't know, maybe there, a little sort of plume holder. Oh, yeah, I'll put your plume holder on it, but you don't want it there, you want it there. Oh, okay. Put your plume holder on. That's right up on crown, it'd look daft it oh. wants to be about there <laughs> okay so then you've got your plumes right there done so this this is him happy and satisfied that's his happy and satisfied face <laughs> right let's get on with it then Okay, why did I laugh? I laughed because after getting the uh, top flap open, I was presented immediately with a, a, a massive oil stain and footprint. <laughs> I just thought, yeah, that's armory. <clears throat> right, uh, what have we got? Uh, more oil, ah, black oil, uh, some... some uh, ah, right, okay, well straight away I recognize these as my... Um, very expensive, and boy did I have to wait a long time for them, uh, shoes that I had made specifically for going in sabatons, which were not actually used in the end after all that. I had specified to the shoemaker, really clearly I felt, um, that I didn't want it to be too long and pointy at the front, and they turned out to be a little bit too long and pointy at the front, so uh, those are just being sent back. Uh, there's more bubble wrap. Uh, uh, yeah, what have we got here? 
Aha! Plates. Um, we've also got uh, two more um, uh, pieces of footwear that I sent in. Uh, one brand new, uh, which uh, we're still a little bit on the pointy side, to be honest. Uh, and uh, and some other ones which I can't see. Right. Um, maybe they're in here. Yes, they are. <laughs> right, he's got flex there. Right, he's put a little, uh, little, see that sort of um, semicircular bar across the bottom. That's one of the ways uh, that you can hold a sabaton on. Uh, sometimes you have a, a hole drilled in the top here, or two holes, and laces come up through there and lace on, but they tend to snap. Uh, these, of course, mean that if you're walking around on a hard surface like stone, you'll go skidding all over the place if you're not careful. Although I imagine it improves the quality of your tap dancing quite a bit. Um, well, we'll see uh, just how well I'm able to walk in these. Now, I didn't want them uh, very pointy. Um, I was actually expecting, to be honest, I was expecting them to be more pointy than this. Uh, that's, um, that's a very blunt ended sabaton for a gothic armour. Now you'll notice that there's no armour around the heel. Uh, we did discuss this and at one point I did specify that I did want armour around the heel because I know that uh, some sabatons did have armour around the heel. Uh, the snag is that if you do have armour around the heel then doing stuff like walking can be quite tricky. Um, now, granted, a lot of sabatons were only actually worn uh, when the, uh, the the wearer was on a horse. Um, so having a uh, plate round the back of your ankle and sometimes ridiculously long pointy things um, out the front that look a bit like this, I mean, it's just ridiculously pointy, um, didn't matter so much if you're on a horse because you didn't have to run about on the ground. Although if you came off that horse in, say, a battle, uh, you might be rather embarrassed that you couldn't actually run about. Um, so uh, were they only worn on parades? It does seem a little bit strange that you would go into battle um, effectively committing yourself to being only on a horse because you're wearing something on your feet that makes it next, next to impossible to actually get about on foot. But anyway, um, uh, my armour insisted on not putting a plate around the back of the ankle here because he said that it would just um, hamper movement so much that uh, I would be I would be cursing him ever after if I did. Uh, so there's one sabaton and um, oh good he's made two. It's, uh, uh, the boot inside here uh, actually uh, I made myself um, back when I was at university or no I think it was shortly after university um, and ooh shiny um, until I actually put them on I won't be able to tell you how well they operate, but I'll do that in a minute because the camera's not set up. Uh, now, the helmet. The helmet. Oh, no, I don't, maybe before we go, I'll just take this off just to uh, look at it. So I've got a, a buckle there and a maker's mark. HH, it says. Uh, okay, and there you go. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lames of metal articulated with sliding rings and uh, so on the inside it's just all metal so the only leather is this strap on the back the sabaton the sabaton okay the helmet now uh, oh <laughs> He's included a drawing that, uh, that we did uh, way back when. Um, right. How's that for a face? Yeah? It doesn't look too much like uh, a World War II bunker or a, a Cylon or any of the um, uh, annoying things that salads often look like. This is technically a salad. Um, you've got a reinforced uh, front bit here with just a little bit of fluting on. Um, uh, oh, there's just a single flute. The drawing has... Uh, anyway, um, how do I... Undo... Oh, I see there's a catch here. How do I work the catch? Not sure. Do I push something? Oh! 
Yes, it's sprung. Okay, there's a sprung catch there. And then up it goes like that. Lovely. Uh, there's one plate around the back there with this tail on it. Uh, that is, is it articulated? Oh, it is very slightly. There's a little bit of movement in it, not much. Uh, on the back here, we have a plume holder, which I did ask for, um, which has been done very nicely in brass. Uh, we've got a, a thick ridge here. This is thicker than most metal uh, of the armour. Uh, on the top of the head, obviously, some place where you really don't want to be hit hard, and it's a, a place that someone can whack you with a halberd or whatever. And on the front here, we've got a, an extra plate uh, to make the front bit just there super thick and uh, man, adds adds a bit of uh, fanciness as well over this scalloped edge. Um, I asked for plenty of breaths, um, not just for breathing, but also because I want to be able to see out of the flipping thing. I want to be able to see down where I'm putting my feet. Uh, so, uh, moment of truth, will I be able to do that? Now, at the moment, there's no cradle in it, no padding, uh, so I'm not expecting my eyes to end up at the right height. Uh, but here goes nothing. Okay. I can see forwards. I can see forwards. I can see to the side. I can't really see up. Nor oh, wow. <laughs> when I said the P of the word up, um, a jet of air got me in, in the eyes. Uh, I think that's going to happen, yes, every time. This, this top uh, bit here, where there are no breaths, uh, directs the, uh, the, my breath straight back into my own eyes, which is rather uncomfortable. Oh wow, yes, if I breathe out, uh, <laughs> I get myself in the eyes quite, uh, quite well. Um, well, I can, uh, I can certainly feel that the breaths are, are working as breaths. I can, I can breathe. Um, I can see that I'm not going to need much padding at all. In fact, if I put more than a tiny amount of padding in this, uh, I'm not going to be able to see out of the slit. At the moment, with it just resting on the top of my actual head, my eyes are pretty much perfectly behind the slits. Um, that's, that's a bit concerning there. I can put almost no padding in this at all, actually. Because if I put loads of padding in, I won't be able to see out. Um, right, how do I work the catch? Where's, where is the catch? Is it this side? I can't feel what I'm doing. After being trapped for eight days in the helmet, I managed to release myself. Fortunately, I was able to feed myself soup through a straw. Oh, that's really, really tight. I can just get it off. Uh, yeah, the catch is only on one side. So I need to... Oh, I see. Right, OK. I push the big button and that moves the small button. There's the catch with the thick stud and how it works. I have to say, I'm, I, yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, the look of that. Would I have picked uh, a cross for my device? Don't know, but uh, it, it's quite pretty. And it's been very nicely done. Very, uh, it's, it's all been smoothed off very nicely. And it's ever so shiny. Um, good, uh, this is pretty heavy. I'll, I'll weigh it in a moment to find out what it weighs. But uh, this is, this is um, not a light helmet by uh, any stretch of the imagination. Um, but this will protect me pretty well, I reckon. Um, and I will have to um, create some sort of padding and liner for it. Uh, I've got here uh, fixed in, I've got a leather uh, skirt that's been riveted in uh, where the tail hides it. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got the, the maker's mark here. One thing I find it odd about these maker's marks is that um, I would expect them to, to be placed in, in very symmetrical and aesthetically pleasing places, but they tend to be just whacked in any old how in any old place, which I, I find very odd. Now, I have just weighed my beautiful newborn baby helmet and discovered that it has the, I think, healthy weight of seven pounds. So, now you know. Oh, hell, Wix! Yes! I was supposed to, hang on, I, need to, I was supposed to tell you about Wix, wasn't I, my sponsor? Uh, right, Wix, Wix is a platform. That's right, it's a platform. And I suppose I ought to admit at this stage that 
I don't really know what the word platform means in the context of the interwebs, but you young folk, you'll understand, won't you, what a platform is? Well, it's, it's one of those, and you can use it to design websites. That's principally what it's for. Um, they also do hosting, which is pretty convenient. And if you are like me, uh, incapable of doing the complicated coding necessary for a, a really advanced, slick website that can do cunning stuff like forums and, and, and selling stuff, for instance, if you have a business promote or a hobby and you want to uh, sell stuff over the, 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 the web and take secure payments and that sort of thing, well, this is one way you can do it. Uh, it's a free platform for the simple stuff, but as you get more advanced, uh, then there are some charges involved. Of course, that's only fair. And it's, if you like, a melding of, of design and, and technology. When I was at school, um, we had the design and technology department, and we all thought it was a bit of a poncily title department, because really it was woodwork and metalwork, and everyone just said it's woodwork and metalwork, or craft. Uh, but design and technology was the official title. Well, I think Wix is perhaps a, a more uh, solid, uh, good, good example of a melding of design and technology. So it brings these things together, and you end up with a slick professional and, importantly, robust website. So if you go to https colon stroke stroke wix dot com stroke go stroke lindy beige, then you can see what they've got on offer, or you could just click the link in the description beneath this, which is much easier. Um, so that's uh, that's what I did to do to create the the new lindy beige dot uk website, and um, I, I hope you like it. I see that some people have even posted on the forum, which is. Um, Extraordinary. It's always extraordinary to find out that I have an effect on the, the actual outside world. Anyway, Wix. OK, so forward vision, fine. Upward vision, non-existent. Downward vision, right. Well, there's a big... I can see... There's the top of my vision. There, there's the bottom of my vision. Edge of vision there and there. So that's a reasonable angle out to the sides about, um, no, oh, it's at least 120 degrees. Um, although def I can definitely see darkness here and here, so it is narrowing my vision a bit. Um, and as for down, um, through the breaths on this side, I've got a reasonable view of the ground beneath me. So I will be able to see, particularly if I move my head left and right like that, um, I will be able to see where I'm putting my feet, which is quite a relief. Uh, through this cross here, I can see now, nah, next to nothing. This is on the right side of the, uh, of well, it's on the left side of the helmet, so a right-handed opponent will be hitting me on that side. So tended, they tended to put fewer breaths uh, on this side, quite often none, actually. Now, one strange thing that you might notice about this helmet is that it is not perfectly symmetrical. And I don't just mean the pattern of breaths here. The whole of this faceplate is actually not on perfectly symmetrically. You might notice that the point of the nose is not absolutely bang in the centre. And this shows particularly if I open the visor and show you where the rivets are that uh, the helmet, that the visor pivots around. As you can see, that this uh, big rivet here on this side, um, look where it is in relation to the reinforcing uh, plate on the front of the helmet. And you can see that the, that's definitely forwards of the back edge of that plate. Well, on this side, you can see that it's definitely behind. And it's also at a different height. If you look at uh, the distance here between the, uh, the brow and the underside of the, uh, of the raised visor there, you can see it's different from that distance on the other side by you know, a, a visible margin. Well, why is that? Is it some terrible mistake? Has my armourer mucked up? Well, actually, it seems that uh, visors like this were deliberately put on slightly skew-width by armourers. And we think the reason for this is to do with keeping the visor up. You see, if you make the visor perfectly symmetrical and you put it smack in the middle of the helmet, then when you raise it, it just flops straight back down again. Um, and that's no good. So if you put it on skew width so that the visor is actually permanently strained a bit by, by being um, twisted, uh, then it grips onto the helmet. And even if uh, the rivets do work a little bit use, uh, loose through oiling and through uh, uh, frequent use, the, uh, the visor never gets floppy. So you can raise the visor and know that it'll stay up. And that's a good thing. The plume holder. It's uh, just a, a brass tube with a slight uh, thicker bit on either end, just to make it look, you know, finished uh, for holding plumes.
The underside of the visor here is not a continuous straight line. You see, it's got a fairly definite angle at this point, and there is a function for that. If someone whacks you on the faceplate so hard that they threaten to push the whole faceplate back into your face, well then uh, this angle, all going well, will hit the back of the helmet and bring everything to a halt. Uh, so rather than uh, this this being a continuous line, so it slides back and you get a face smashed in by some very heavy maul or something, uh, this could make the difference. <laughs> um, I just tried shouting whilst wearing this helmet with the visor down and learned not to do that. I absolutely deafened myself. My ears are ringing now. That was quite painful. So I've learned the hard way that if you if you need to shout whilst wearing a helmet like this, raise your visor. And if that amount of sound is, is contained within the helmet to deafen me quite so effectively, presumably then other people outside my helmet, which is, well, everyone else, uh, probably wouldn't have heard a great deal. So yes, shouting very ineffective with your visor down. Uh, but it might be of interest to you to know that as I'm uh, crouching down in front of the camera talking to you, I'm wearing my sabatons. And I've been doing this for a, a while now, taking close-ups, and um, the sabatons really haven't been uh, much of a problem. I've been able to kneel down in them um, and um, it's, yeah, it's not been a problem. So uh, the sabatons appear to be working. Hooray! Breathtaking! One unwelcome thing that I've just noticed about this is that I can't look up with my whole head because this tail prevents me from doing so. This, this tail that sticks out the back of the helmet um, stops me from pointing my whole head into the sky. So if I do want to look up, um, I'll just have to hire someone to look up for me and then I'll ask him what he saw. There's the strip of leather riveted into the back of the helmet to which I could attach some sort of liner. Is this too silly? It's not too silly, is it? Tell me it's not too silly. It's not a huge amount of movement, but it turns out that it's all you need. Right, how to put on the sabaton? It's easy enough. You've got this uh, loop here. I'm going to hook my toe into that, pass the strap around behind my foot into this Buckle here, pull it nice and tight, and there we go. And uh, once it's on, I can crouch down quite happily, uh, like this, or even yeah, there. They're fine. So shiny. So what am I wearing here? Am I wearing a salad or an armet? Well, I'm wearing a salad. Um, an armet is fundamentally different from a sallet in that an armet opens outwards like this. Uh, it, it's got uh, hinges along here and the whole helmet opens outwards like that uh, and that, this helmet doesn't have that. This has got a, a solid back end and the visor just goes up and down. Uh, nor is this a close helmet. A close helmet comes underneath the chin. There is plate coming underneath the chin like that and sometimes flaring back out again. And uh, in order to get your head into a close helmet you have to be able to hinge the whole of the front of it uh, up. But this is just a faceplate that comes down just this far and the rest of the helmet uh, doesn't hinge to uh, allow me to get my head in and out. So I'm just getting my head in and out just like that. So this is quite definitely a, a salad, but the visor on it does look a lot like the visor on an armette. And that's completely uh, deliberate because I don't like uh, the usual visors on salads. It's the visor that uh, makes you look like a, a horrible concrete World War II German bunker or a Cylon or, or something, I don't know. Um, so there is a type of salad with what's known as a bellows visor. There you go, there's an example. And so what we did is we got a salad with that type of uh, visor, but we just smoothed out the bottom bit. So yes, this visor does look a bit like an armet, uh, but this is a salad. So uh, my armorer said uh, very early on, oh, I don't do fantasy. All right, he doesn't do fantasy. Uh, this is not a fantasy uh, helmet. This is a helmet that could have existed, but it's not a reproduction of an actual individual helmet. But that's not what I wanted anyway. I wanted a helmet that would, for start, fit me. Um, so getting a helmet that um, fits some other chap by making an exact copy of an actual one, that's not much use. Um, and uh, I wanted a helmet that was um, specific to me. I wanted to imagine that uh, I was some English knight in the 15th century going to an armourer. He quite liked Gothic stuff, but there were some bits of uh, the, the Gothic stuff, like the extremely pointy sabatons, that he didn't like. So he said to his armourer, no, I want this like that and that like this, and could you put one of these? Same sort of thing that you do there, only could you put it on one of those and so forth. So it's a bespoke suit of armour. Um, 
for a gentleman knight of the 15th century. So my hope is that um, if I could go back in time and, and stand in a crowd um, of guys wearing armour of the period, though I wouldn't look like any of the others, no one would be able to say, oh, hang on, that's completely wrong. It would be a, a, a type of armour, it would be a suit of armour that could have existed at the time, even if it didn't. So there you go. This is my compromise. It's not an armet. It's not a salad. Yes, it is. Um, I think it has uh, a lot of the good points of both. Hurrah. <laughs>